everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a deck profile here for my Magistus deck. I do have to apologize beforehand that I am actually going to be playing a few proxies. Unfortunately, I couldn't gather all the cards I actually needed. There are a lot of cards that I actually need and they are very difficult to find or at least difficult to pull. You guys have actually seen me do openings for the Genesis Impact set and you know that it's incredibly difficult. I think I opened about two boxes worth of actual packs from Genesis Impact and to get the cards I actually need, it's incredibly difficult because you can only get three ultras per box anyway, so the fact that you're gonna struggle that much to get an ultra, it's going to be really difficult to complete playsets of any of these cards. However, with that being said, I'm still very excited to show you guys what I've actually built with my particular variant of it, and hopefully you guys enjoy this. I will actually be making uh, perhaps a test hand video in a different video, of course, but with that being said, it's just the deck today. Forgive me with the proxies. So to begin right off the bat here, we have three copies of Really Owner, definitely one of the most crucial cards of the deck. Actually, we're playing three copies of all of the Magistus monsters anyway, but three Really Owner is definitely a really crucial card in the deck itself. So I'm still in the hunt for two more copies of it, but I think you guys get the picture. Next, we're playing here three copies of Zoroa. Again, I also need two copies of it. It's another ultra rare of the deck itself. So by buying packs, you're really just taking a long time to get it. I've checked all the online stores, at least within Australia. And unfortunately, these two cards are just sold out. Really Ona and Zoroa, you can't find them. So I unfortunately have to go out hunting specifics from like other players who are actually uh, putting them in their trade binders and all so that's going to be quite difficult because We're kind of going through this semi lockdown Situation so it's hard to go out to actually get cards as well But with that being said definitely three copies of Zoroa However, luckily we do have three copies here of uh, Endymion definitely fantastic It is actually the main card that just starts you off your combos anyway So as long as you have this card at three copies, you should be fine with a lot of your combos It's really fantastic and finally we're playing here three copies of Crowley Crowley again also three copies of it. We're basically maxing out on all of the Magistus monsters Which is something that gives us the consistency of this deck to perform all of our combos However moving on I am playing the perform mage engine definitely a really nice engine to actually play So I'm actually playing two copies of hat trigger just because it special summons itself out really easily but I've seen people who have actually played two Trick Clown instead and one Hat Trigger. So that could be a ratio you could actually try out. Of course, you could adjust the ratios however you want. But I'm playing my personal preference of it. Uh, playing an extra Trick Clown is okay because having Trick Clown with the Endymion as your starting opening hand, you could do so much just out of that alone. So the Perform Age engine, definitely really fantastic. Now for a bit of hand traps to at least disrupt the opponents, we are going to be playing three copies of Ash Blossom. And I'm also just gonna throw in here two copies of Nibiru. Both are really amazing cards. They definitely help disrupt the opponents a lot. And they have helped out amazingly for the deck itself. If you actually want to play Effect Veiler instead, you could definitely do so. Take out the Ash or the Nibiru and put in three copies of Effect Veiler. You will do really well. Why is Effect Veiler so crucial in this deck? Because Effect Veiler is actually a spell caster as well. So you're actually allowed to combo off with the Endymion if you would actually like to do that. Of course, with what I already have in the main deck itself in terms of the monsters, I feel that I have enough of the spell caster monsters to pull off all my combos. However, onto spells, I'm going to be playing three copies here of Freetra. Definitely a fantastic card, but we are also playing here three copies of Thurgy. These are all just really crucial cards for the deck itself. Actually, you are playing three copies of almost every single Magister spell and trap. Uh, it's just really amazing. Well, only the spells, of course, they only have spells, but uh, you get what I mean. You play three copies of every single Magister's monster and spell in this deck. 
which means we also are playing three copies of Invocation and we're also playing three copies of Tres Magistus. Uh, all are very crucial cards and thank goodness I have three copies of all of these. And for a bit of supporting spell cards as one of, so we're playing Cord by the Grave, Monster Reborn, Upstart Goblin, World Legacy Succession, and Mind Control. All are really fantastic cards allowing you to manipulate the board or at least manage your resources really well or the while disrupting or deck thinning. And finally, as for draw power, I'm playing here two copies of Pot of Desires. You're playing three copies of all of the Magistus cards that actually exist here, so playing Pot of Desires is not necessarily the worst option ever. Now, a lot of people might not actually want to play Pot of Desires, and that's okay. That's your option. I've seen people play Spellbook of Knowledge. That's also a viable option. I should note to you guys that I am not playing the Spellbook of Knowledge in this deck. I'm not playing the Spellbook Engine at all, because it's just something that I personally want to uh, play on my own accord. I didn't want to have a spellbook engine in the deck just because it was a spellcaster deck. I just feel like so many spellcaster decks are relying too much on the spellbook engine. It takes up too much of the originality of a deck and I want to keep something as pure as possible to allow me to utilize the actual deck itself rather than focusing on another engine to accelerate the deck. However, moving on to the extra deck now, we are going to be playing three copies here of our uh, Artemis. Unfortunately, I only have one copy of it. I was very fortunate to actually pull one of it, but this card alone is a $20 card. The fact that I need two more means that I have to spend at least an additional $40, which is definitely going to be quite pricey, but you know what? It's worth it. It's a really crucial card for the deck itself. So hopefully I could get it by the next deck profile. Moving on, we're going to be playing here one copy of the Nina Ruru. It's just a one-off in the deck. You don't really need to play more than that. You're also going to be playing here one Varum and also one Borrowed Savage Dragon. Also really amazing cards for the deck itself. You could definitely go into them and they are almost as if they are staples at these particular ratios as well. One of the more crucial cards, or at least more of the uh, important cards of the deck, would be the Iwas. Very amazing card, it's actually just uh, really easy to go into, and it's usually your opening starting combo that you would uh, go with if you actually drew into an Endymion, but it could actually work with any of the other uh, monsters as well for your Magistus cards. Here's a proxy, I'll put it on the screen, but this is meant to be a Selene. Unfortunately, I don't have that card. It comes out in uh, Dual Overload, so definitely go and get that set if you want chances to pull a Selene. I'm hopefully going to either buy it off someone, or I might just buy another box of Dual Overload and hope that I get lucky with it. But with that being said, Selene is definitely a really good card for this deck. Just play one of them, that's all you need. And as for a bunch of link monsters to support my deck, I'm playing here Nightmare Cerberus, a cross sheep. Actually, this works well because you're just going into so many different types of summoning methods. You're also playing here a Unicorn, a Phoenix, we're playing Ip, and we're also playing here a Crusadia Avramax. You could always just take out the Avramax and put in Access Code Talker, but the thing is this, Access Code is still a really expensive card. So Avramax is definitely a perfect substitute for this deck, and I rarely use that term. So with that being said, uh, this is pretty much the deck itself. Now a lot of you guys might be wondering, what about the Totally Awesome package? You could definitely play that, right? Yes, you can actually play the Totally Awesome package, I just don't have the cards. Basically, if you have just one copy of Bahamut Shark and one copy of Totally Awesome, that's all you actually need for the deck. I would take out one Cerberus and I'd probably even take out the Cross Sheep and that would give me the space to fit in one Bahamut Shark and one copy of Totally Awesome. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this particular deck profile. I will be doing a test and video for this so do stay tuned for that. But if you did enjoy this video please drop a like, share, comment and subscribe. Hit that bell notification as well, it really does help. However, with that being said, I do hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you all next time.